All right, so Friday was a pretty impressive day. I think a lot of people realized that this week was a bit special. There were some moves that that you didn't really expect, and we had more of that on Friday. So we had gold and silver up. We had the dollar not really down, and we had the markets down and the miners up. So those kind of moves are not typical. So let's look at the charts and actually the markets. You know, let's start with the Nasdaq here. Not looking so good. Okay, there's no confirmation yet, but what I'm looking for is this little move lower in the NASDAQ and all the markets, by the way. You know, maybe there's a small bounce, maybe intraday, maybe one day's worth of bounce once it hits this ascending. But I'm looking for a close below this ascending, which will take us all the way down to this little low here for the NASDAQ anyway. And then a small bounce and then bam, back down we go. I think we're going to go lower. I think this bounce, this right shoulder I've been talking about. I think we went a bit higher than we should have, but again, there's there's always news or, or you know whatever things like this happen. But I still think we're creating a right shoulder, and we're going to go lower back down to this neckline and flush the S and P. Same sort of thing. We don't really have the ascending coming into play as soon, but you know we've got this left shoulder. Here's the head. Right shoulder went a bit too high. Look at this close here. Close right on that little level there. But I should move this down because this is where it counts. And you know. I say tomorrow, Monday, once we trade, we're going to trade down here. And I'm looking for a close below this 4-4, four, four, whatever it is, 4-4-3, four, four, let's say. We're probably going to close much lower. And that will take us all the way down to this neckline here. And again, I expect us to go lower, maybe a small bounce here, but back down again. I think the high is in. I did say it up here. I did say it during quite a lot of this rise. But this huge bearish engulfing candle was it for me. And we haven't been able to take it out. And right now, things look pretty bearish short term. And, and I would say medium and long term, fundamentally for the markets. Dow Jones, same sort of thing, you know, close at low of day, big red candle, just going to trade lower. And this one may be the first, one of the first ones to close below its ascending. I'm looking for a close below 34,250, just there, you know, just there. Then it's cleared also this low here. And then bam, probably, probably go right down to, to this level here, actually. So the Dow Jones looks also pretty shaky. The Russell is always the worst. I love it. That's closed below its ascending, at least the ascending that I've got in place. I think that's pretty accurate. I'm looking for more continuation. I really want to close below 182. We haven't had that in a long time. And that would take us down to 180 and then down, down, down. Let's look at the banks. Yeah, the banks are okay. The XLF is okay, let's say. Not allowed to break out with the markets going down, but really not the weakest one, the XLF. I'll be honest, I'm pretty impressed by its resilience, but I think when the markets come down, down we go to 33.50, and then the rest is history. But these guys, the KBE and the KRE, you know, they weren't down as much as I thought they would be with the markets down heavy, like the S&P down 1.5%. The NASDAQ also, I mean, you'd expect the banks to be lower, so they were relatively strong, actually. But I think once this flush becomes more apparent, then down we go here. And the KBE, once it closes below this 37.50, that's it. Huge move down. KRE, same sort of thing. A little close here below 42.50, let's say at least. Down we go, and it can really cascade from there. And I still think there's going to be a banking crisis coming. So maybe it starts off with some of these tech stocks, like look at Apple, right? Maybe I'll just look at Apple real quick. I never do this, but... Something like Apple. Look at this. Once some of the big boys start to lose their key support, like Apple would be 172, probably. So close below 172. It just held its local uh, support zone here, 173-ish. But yeah, a close below this, which could happen next week easily. Then, um, well, then down we go, at least to this level, if not lower, back down to this level. And that will definitely take out the NASDAQ. And then, then everything cascades down. Because basically the markets, the S&P, the NASDAQ, They've just been rising because of, you know, six, seven, eight key stocks. So once one of them loses its critical support zone, I mean, look at this bearish engulfing on Meta. Down we go here. So Microsoft, I haven't really looked at these too much. Same sort of pattern as Meta. Netflix, that doesn't look good, does it? Down we go here to break out, to retest. So these are starting to look a bit weak. Okay, Tesla's okay, but AMD, definitely not good. Look at that, close below, ascending. Um, very bearish and golf and close the low day. This is just going to go lower. And by the way, my little NVIDIA short, which I keep, which I've kept on. Look at that. You know, down we go. Close the low day. Looks like it wants to go all the way down here. 
basically some big key stocks want to go lower and that will accelerate the move in the Nasdaq, the S&P, and that'll help drag the banks a little lower until the banks take over. And then we'll probably have a, um, you know, a banking crisis, Charles Schwab or Deutsche Bank. I don't know. Let's just pick your, pick your bank. All right, let's look at interest rates. Um, they also keep grinding higher. The one year irrelevant, just sideways up, mainly sideways though. The two year, you know, we had this tag and bearish candle, but honestly, the next day we made up for it. That was Thursday. And then Friday, again, just, just slowly, very subtly moving higher. Once we close above 5.1, which can happen, honestly, on Monday, that's it. So the yields, there was just that one day where I was, mm, maybe it's the high. The only thing that can save yields from going higher are people freaking out buying bonds if there's a market crash, just like here. And um, we need a bit of a bit of a collapse, bit of a black swan event for that, I think. So otherwise, uh, we're moving higher. Five years, same thing. Look at that. That's a fantastic close. It's just one day away from making new highs or making the strongest close during the bear market. Look at the 10 years. 10 years is just so important. Look at that. One day away from 30 year, best close in a long time. Yields just want to go higher. And it's across the board. Look at the EU. Look at that. Just one day away from making new highs. The British are making a bit of a comeback. So yields up, markets down, <clears throat> dollar sideways. You know, even though it's unchanged, I think it's pretty bullish because um we had a massive move up, retracing back to to let's say breakout. But look at that, just bought all the way back up. So the dollar for me, the DXY wants to just go and test this level here, this tram zone here. I don't know whether it's gonna find resistance at one hundred five point six ish or 106 basically this zone here i see it going up there and stalling a little bit then maybe back down again let's see what happens but the txy just this whole period just being strong and it's it continues to be strong so nothing much to say there except more strength let's look at commodities so copper very hard to call copper it's just sideways within this massive tram zone you know it's getting pulled and pushed based on the dollar based on markets um, and its own supply and demand, just sideways, sideways copper. Natural gas really wanted it to close above 2.9. And on this day here, when it closed, when it really had a lot of resistance and closed at low of day, I'm not surprised that we went a bit lower because that was pretty bearish candle. Now we're retesting this mini descending um, breakout zone. So I really wanted to retry and close above 2.9. I'm not up for this move all the way back down again. It keeps doing the same thing, just toying with everyone. So natural gas still bullish, but obviously that's a close at low of day following an already bearish candle the day before on Thursday. Oil just keeps going up. I think we're pretty much at a bit of a resistance point. It can go a little higher, 92 to 94. I think it will stall there and maybe come back down to 85-ish, but oil is just really good. Bucking the trend of the markets, you know, in the past, you'd see oil go down with the markets because the markets were down heavy, but it doesn't care about that. Uh, dollars being strong, doesn't really care about that. It's just been going up despite that. So there's a lot of underlying strength in oil. Obviously, we have geopolitics. We have the supply demand, OPEC, you know, they keep cutting. So there's a real reason for it to go up. And for me, you know, long term, oil all the way up. Up we go, like all commodities. So I just try and call some short term moves. And I think 92, 94, we may stall a bit, but otherwise, all the way up. Uranium, this thing is just an absolute monster. It just keeps going up. To be honest, there's a bit of resistance here. And I did say, well, I said, what did I say? Like 2750 to 2850, that zone should be resistance. We're pretty close. All right. Where did it go? Where did it peak? 2730. Well, that's the same thing as 2750. And I think the fact that it, it closed near low of day. I mean, obviously it was a green day, it gapped up, but there's quite a lot of resistance there. So it's going to be pretty hard for it to, to have another gap up, move up day. So I think we're going to come down a bit, maybe back down to 25, maybe under shoots 24, as some people freak out thinking they bought the top. I don't know, but I think uranium just short time could come down a bit. Some gap fill will maybe all the way down here. But it's just so strong. It's it's really nice to see, actually, for those that hold it. So back down we go. And then once it recovers and curls a bit, all the way back up to 30. 
So uranium, very strong, very impressive, but I think it's a bit like oil, but more so than oil. Uranium has got quite a lot of resistance there. Oil actually closed pretty much a high of day, so that's nowhere near the same as uranium on a, on an intraday level. Okay, let's look at gold and silver, starting with gold. So markets were down. Dollar was unchanged, but pretty strong because it closed a high of day, and despite that, gold was up decently. So gold looks like it's got some relative strength here. I did say the first level to watch is 1930. Look at that. We tagged 1930 perfectly. It's not hard to see why. It was the high from back here. So 1930 was resistance. I want to see a close above 1930, but this was a pretty good close. This is the best close in a while. So actually, this was almost good enough. We really want to see continuation. For me, the levels on the way up is this descending line. So let's say we continue higher. We might tag 1940 or where, wherever we are when we start tagging it. So yeah, let's say 1940, we'll probably tag this and come back down again. But I still want to see a close above 1930, even if we come back down again. But yeah, this zone is the next resistance. Then after that, 1950, I would love to see a close above 1950. And then all the way up to 1980, so for me, 1940, 1950, 1980 are the mini zones on the way up. Uh, on the way down, now it looks like it's done with its downward move because it's going up with the markets going down. It's going up despite um, the dollar's strength. So imagine the dollar reverses, then we'll really move up. But just in case, on the way down, 1900, a close below 1900 would send us all the way back down to 1885-ish. And then below that, 1860. But at the moment, I'm looking for the levels on the way up silver i need to find silver that was similar so obviously we had very strong support here i've been saying it for a while this ascending also the horizontals uh you could even add this actually into silver but it's unnecessary there was a real level um whatever that's done we're not going back down there i don't think but well we could easily actually but on the way up a close above 2320 is what I'd love to see. And then honestly, as long as gold's going for 1950, maybe 1980, I don't know. I don't know how strong silver will be relative to gold on the way up. Um, but anyway, next resistance is 24. Then after that, really 20, 25 or just below 25, more 2480. So silver's doing its thing, found support where it was supposed to. So that's good. But it's just one or two days of, of bullish action. I mean, this was actually a red day. This was down 1%, but still, it was good buying from where it should have found support. So it's one or two days, really. This is the first real day of bullish action. And that's whilst the market's going down and the dollar's not going down. So that's good to see. Let's look at the miners. Look at that. Very nice. It's exactly where I wanted it to go. Let's get rid of that. So that's what I wanted to see. A move into here, a close above this, this 30 zone. Uh, sorry, 29.50, but it didn't close above 30. But that's the next level, really, a close above 30. I'd like to see some continuation. Just one more day will make such a difference for the GDX. A close above 30, and then up we go up here. And then a lot of the stocks will look good. A lot of the miners look very good, actually. Um, I think it's like Newmont looks good. I think Barrack looks good. Relative to the GDX, they're up. I'm going to make a video right after this. Uh, looking at the portfolios, so don't worry about that. But GDX, just what I wanted to see, resistance where you expect it. You know, you've got two lines of resistance. You've got this horizontal, and then oops, and then you've got the descending, so you expect to see resistance there. But we need to see continuation. We need gold to go up, silver to go up, and the miners go up. But it was very nice to see the miners go up. I think they outperformed the metals, and that's despite the markets being down. So it was very good to see. It was a very, very bullish day yesterday. Uh, Friday, even though we're up only 2%, just given what the market was doing, it's a very, very good day for the, the metals and miners. GDXJ, same sort of thing. You'd expect it maybe to be a little higher, but yeah, the 30 on GDX is pretty much the 37-ish zone on the GDXJ. You can see why. You've got this horizontal level, the old highs, and got this descending. So just you see some continuation, you know? Finally, Bitcoin... Bitcoin moved up nicely the last two or three days off its low. But again, if the NASDAQ starts to go down, yeah, for me, it's uh, it's just going to come back down again. But again, look for a close below 25,000. That's when it's done. Otherwise, a close above 28,000. So that's that's all you need to watch for that. I still favor the, the move to the downside. Okay, that'll do. I hope that was useful. I hope you realize 
why I think that the miners and the metals had a very good day, even though they weren't up too much. It's just relative to everything else. Uh, and finding support just where it had to, so that's very good. Now I'm going to do a video on the portfolio of the miners.